Have you ever wondered how you can increase your income as a music teacher or even take a student from zero to hero? Well, you're in the right place because you're about to meet one teacher that did just that, and I'm so excited to introduce her to you. Uh, hi, and welcome to the Ultimate Music Teachers Interview Series. I'm your host, Glory St. Germain, and my special guest today is Kathy Grimbley, owner of Elements of Music. So welcome, Kathy. Thank you so much, Glory. I was thrilled when you asked me to do this. Well, tell us a little bit about Elements of Music. So where are you located? And tell us about your music program. Well, I'm in Ontario, Canada, and it was a number of years ago I had actually ventured into working outside of the home at a local music education center, and I had never been thrilled with the name, you know, Kathy's Music Studio. It was always Kathy, Kathy, and I thought, no, that doesn't ring a bell, and what ultimately I was focusing on anyways were the basic elements of music that could take students to any other music study or voice study and be well equipped. That was my main focus and Elements of Music as a name was born even though I'd already been teaching 20 years at that point. Yes. Well, I think what's important and what I love about what you just said is that we need to be able to pivot right? We have this concept and sometimes teachers say, oh, I've been teaching for 35 years and blah, blah, blah. But that doesn't mean that you're automatically successful. Like you can be teaching for 50 years and not really, other than of course, serving your students, but not really shifting as a business mindset. And I think as a successful music business owner, you know, what did, did you always want to be a music teacher? Let's start with that. (laughs) That's the funny thing. And this is what I've often said. Well, I don't often say it now, but when our children were growing up and their friends came over and everyone was trying to decide what to study at university or college. And I'd say, don't sweat it because you're only 18 or whatever age they were, things change. So you can start somewhere. When I was that age and my mother or someone would say, so are you going to teach piano? And I'd say, oh, goodness, no, I have no patience patience at all. Well, I went back to it at 30 yes, and just fell in love with all the things that I was basically ignoring at, you know, 16 and 17. And then I turned around and said, I have to share this. I have to share this. And then I just fell in love with teaching. Yeah. And I think 31. Yeah. And it's interesting that you said, you know, you started teaching at 16. I started teaching at 16 as well. My reasons were kind of the same as yours. I just wanted to buy a car and I knew I would make way more money teaching than I would if I just kept my job at the Dairy Queen. And so, you know, there we have, again, that pivot. And then once you get in it, but I think also that sometimes when you do take that little break or, you know, you said you hit 30 and went, okay, wait a minute, this is, this is actually a business that I can run. And I love seeing your growth in the ultimate music theory community. Uh, I just, it, you just always make me smile. You, and you also show up, you know, not only for other educators, but you show up for your students and you show up for your community. And I just want to say congratulations on that because it really takes that, you know, PMA, as we call it, that positive mental attitude uh, to really make the shift and say, okay, not only will I, you know, grow my business, but I'm going to do it joyfully and have fun doing it. So Let's maybe back up a little and take us back to where you were before you joined the UMTC Elite Educator Program, Kathy. Okay, well, actually, I'm just going to do a little bit of a correction because at 16, 17, I did not know I was going to teach music. Oh. <laughs> I didn't really start till I was 31. Oh. And so I'm celebrating 30 years. But as you talk about pivoting, yes, <laughs> my head spins sometimes when I think of it. But no, I've always been looking for the tools, the mm-hmm. things that I can buff out an education as gently and invitingly as possible with those students. Because, of course, I remember I loved playing, but I wasn't always paying attention to all the ins and outs. And so I you know, maintain fairness and balance that my students may not be all hip, hip, hooray about all the details. So before you came along, I was piecing things together. 
-hmm. and finding multiple resources, which you have done, and you've packaged it up so beautifully in the Ultimate Music Theory program. When I met you for real at the end of December last year, it was a pivotal moment. It was a wow, I can't believe this is happening. This is the answer to my unknown prayer. I didn't know I was praying. <laughs> but, but there you have it. And glory, it's a ripple effect. Yes. And I think one thing too, that so many of us went through, um, and you shared with me earlier was just losing students because now you're, you're having to go online. I mean, that was during the pandemic and, and what, what was that feeling like for you? <laughs> well, last March, I, I was thinking, oh, it's okay. It's just us. We can yes. continue meeting in person. Yes. And then a couple of days later, I'm thinking, Oh, no, I guess I can't. And it was about a day and a half before I thought, oh, I can do Zoom because I've done Zoom uh, yes. courses before. And so everybody, pretty much everybody jumped on board. It's when school went to yes. online that they started dropping. <laughs> but uh, like, like I jumped ahead a little bit and went to December when I introduced your program well, we still thought we were getting back together in person, but everybody was game. Yeah. Everybody who was still online was game and, and jumped on to the theory bandwagon. Yes. The way we went. So it really did give a breath of fresh air, a new direction, and as I was saying, a cohesiveness to how I was doing theory. So yeah. that was great. And I think it was definitely a year of change. I mean, for so many teachers and, and it had a huge impact, um, not only on us emotionally, but also financially, right? Uh, because now you're, you're kind of losing students. So what obstacles did you have to overcome or, or what needs did you see as necessary just to continue to, to keep your business going? You know what else really took off, which has been fabulous. It never really occurred to me to give my students longer lessons. Mm -hmm. I was a big proponent of the 30 minutes, maybe maybe 45 if they were a little more serious and engaged. But in a conversation with you, I just sort of went blink, blink, and immediately everybody went to either 45 minutes or an hour. I, I offered yes. that right away and off went the 30 minute lessons. And that immediately improved finances Yes. Um, yeah. No one, no one has actually balked at it. And yes. filling in those 45 and 60 minute lessons is easy and it very is. enjoyable, actually. <laughs> and, and I think we have more opportunity, you know, when we think of anything else, if you go into any kind of a, a business meeting or, uh, you know, a, a coaching call, a, an hour is sort of a good time to really learn something new, talk about how the implementation steps can can uh, open up, and also what results or what outcomes do you want from that. So there's kind of a three step process. And it's why I'm just a firm believer in like, you know, one hour lessons are really what are required especially when you think you're only going to have that student once a week. And so then, of course, opening up the, you know, the whole theory component, because that's what really builds the musicianship skills. And it doesn't matter what instrument you're playing. Uh, I remember, well, a conversation that I had with you when you joined the UMTC Lead Educator Program. And um, it kind of makes me smile because I've seen your massive growth. And, and how has this impacted your business? Like, where, where are things for you? <laughs> I just told my husband this morning that I was five students away by 45 minute lessons. So it could just be three one hour lessons right. away from me meeting a goal that I had loosely, very loosely set for myself yes. a couple of years ago. And this is, this is only part a of the goal. Yes. <laughs> but I, I thought, well, you know what, that was actually rather painless. It was actually easy. And I'm looking so forward. I am in person again now with several yes. students, but I'm super looking forward to September. Yeah. It's just going to be great. And I mean, I, it's not about the money. We know it's not about the money. It is about the, how it reflects what Absolutely. we're putting into what we're putting into. And that was a big motivator for me, sort of the responsibility 
yes. of giving them as much as possible in that once per week mm-hmm. meeting, yes. but also feeling like this has finally become an authentic business, a mm-hmm. real, I don't like to say job, a vocation, uh, something that 30 years ago, I was only beginning to see yes. what it could be. Yes. And I, I love your energy, Kathy, and your, your passion and your smile. And I remember seeing some things that you were, you know, taking um, studio and you were doing some things outside with your students and, and share a little bit about that story. Well, oh, Kathy is always, you know, silver lining and trying yes. to, as you say, you know, pivot. Yes. So when, when Ontario was locked down again, Mm -hmm. I guess the third time, and then it's been lasting since, I thought, oh, what am I going to do? I have to keep these students who won't go online, I have to keep them engaged. And I thought, oh, I know exactly what what I'll do. It's usually, usually, (laughs) really (laughs) nice weather in May and June in Ontario. I'll do my lessons outside. So I got a tent. And I rented a keyboard from our local music suppliers and <laughs> set it up. I took some house plants out and a carpet and I set everything up, including my great big whiteboard. I had a brother and sister the first day and it was blowing and cold. Oh, no. <laughs> and so it was not nice here in May and June And I had to abandon that idea, but it was okay. Most Mm -hmm. of the kids were still on board online. And I thought, well, at least I know what outdoor looks like. Right. And I will try it again. Absolutely. Yeah. I remember doing a theory club class. As a matter of fact, it was in my studio here. And it was one of those beautiful days. And all the kids were like, oh, it's so nice outside. And here we are stuck in, you know, inside. And one of them said, well, can we do theory club classes outside? And I thought, yeah, why not? So we (laughs) grabbed our books and just went outside and sat around the picnic table. And sometimes they can just be impromptu, right? Just moving from indoors to outdoors. But what I love about what you said, Kathy, was that when you have problems, you can either say, Oh, I can't do that. Right. Or we can think outside the box and get our, our positive mental attitude together and say, well, what can I do? And as you know, you know, I'm all about hashtag solutions only like, yeah, don't, don't come to me with a problem. Come to me with, with solutions. And, and, you know, one solution is, is not a solution. Uh, two, you're kind of stuck when you have three options. That's really when you have you know, the thinking process, and it might even be four. Uh, as a business owner, we need to look at those obstacles and then find those solutions and then weigh out which is the best option. And, uh, you know, what you just said, Kathy, it's like, well, it was kind of the weather wasn't great, but it was still a great concept and kids were excited about it. And it doesn't mean that you're never going to do it again. You're just going to check the weather and maybe give them a little, you know, and, and of course, then you've got short notice. But I think one of the things that we talk about inside the MTC Lead Educator Program is mindset. And have you seen or how have you seen that shift in mindset uh, about what you've accomplished now and and what you're accomplishing this year? And congratulations, because you're you're like this close to hitting your goal already. I know. Thank you. And it really is. I've learned so much through you, not just with the Ultimate Music Theory program. That was more of a, a relief or an affirmation mm-hmm. because I was just enjoying doing mostly the right answers <laughs> <laughs> and and my family was was really tickled we have two of our adults uh children living yes. with us during this time yes. and they just thought it was great that mom would go into her studio mm-hmm. early in the morning and she'd be sitting there doing her homework and cheering me on when I do the yes. exams and that was so fun but during our Thursday morning coaching calls, you were always presenting something, some kind of challenge that even if I didn't quite meet that particular challenge, it was that little voice, that little reminder, that little 
well, Kathy, <laughs> you, <laughs> you could step it up a little bit more or a little differently. And yes, yes. you can. <laughs> So yes, I have so much to thank you for. And earlier met, I mentioned the ripple effect. Yes. It caused me to add a couple of more, a um, couple more courses just to keep me on my game. Yes. And to expand and be more serviceable to my students and so on. Cause I'm really enjoying the adult student as well. Yes. A lot. Yes. <laughs> And, you know, one of the things uh, that um, I, I want to congratulate you about, because part of the UMTC Lead Educator Program is the Ultimate Music Theory Certification Course for Teachers, right. which is really about how do you teach? What are the words that you use when you teach? And I know I struggled immensely as um, a young theory teacher. Like, I just, I just didn't really know anything. And so you have two options. And, you know, as they say, knowledge is power. But knowledge is not power, it's the implementation that is the power. And so it's great to learn something, but then if you don't implement that, you know, I've spent a lot of time, as you know, Kathy, attending mastermind uh, groups that sometimes go for three days in a row, 12 hours a day for three days, which is called immersion learning, where you literally, it's like, you know, taking 15 courses and doing them in three days condensed. It's really um, uh immerse immersive learning but what happens when you went in and did the certification course and congratulations because you of course passed with uh first class honors with distinction but you also now have the feeling of well what does it feel like as a student you went through all those emotions about being excited about learning to being like hopeful that you were going to do well to think yeah i'm going to get this right too and you also set an example for your children at no. home, right? They can see like you never stop learning. That's right. You know, oh, I, I, you are my new, you know, hey, we could turn you into a bobblehead doll. Like, <laughs> Glory's bob bobbling in our, you know, the back of our cars. Seriously, it's just been because I've often said teaching piano in a private studio is not so much a lonely activity because yes. you get the change of, of people frequently. Yes. But unless we reach out within a like-minded group, yes, we can be left wondering, am I yes. still in the 20th or 21st century? Am I still doing things yes. that are helpful or am I behind or whatever? And so I do love the opportunity to read or follow uh, an online presentation or something. And your coaching calls fall into that as well. And yes. just by a little aside, the only reason I haven't been there lately is because two new students have decided for the rest of summer to do twice a week. Nice. <laughs> oh, that yeah. And this is just one more, you know, way to, to serve your community, you know, and I love the coaching calls. I love our Facebook group because it is a place where you can go share your wins, know that you're going to be celebrated. Right. And, and it's joyful. And really I am here to serve. I'm here to serve my community of, of teachers, just as you are there to serve your community of, of students. Right. And I guess one question that, um, that our viewers might be interested in is so, you know, you've gone through this pivot, this transition um, through everything that's gone on in the last, you know, couple of years, what's coming up next. So we always want to think of the next big picture. <laughs> oh, wonderful question. I am, I've, I've mentioned Clifton Strengths Finder to you before, but I delved into that a little bit more last year and yes. two things that I do often is collect information, reading a lot, collecting yes. information. And it isn't necessarily for me. This yes. is sort of one of those, who can I share this with? Right. So following that, and, and it was getting a little bit out of hand. I was calling myself an information vacuum. What do you <laughs> do with it? Right? What do you do with that? Yes. So one of the things that you were talking about when we were uh, discussing healing frequencies yes. and music for, you know, soothing the mind and the soul and the body and so on. And I'm thinking, oh, I have a lot of information on that. Yes. <laughs> so what's wonderful is in conversation with other people, sometimes they're the one that can cut through all the details and say, why yes. don't you make a list of all of those frequencies or information on that, a, a list of music that you have and, and share it as part of your 
package. So that was just a very recent thing. Yes. I loved getting that certificate in the mail. I was surprised at what it meant to me. Mm -hmm. And so I'm looking forward to another certificate I know I'll be getting in October when I finish the course I'm doing now and write the exam in October. And it helps further bring all of this together so that I give the optimum experience to my student. The Mm -hmm. optimum, and this to your point as well, learning styles that's always been important to me loved hearing you talk about that and so paying even more attention to the language the activities how am I best going to meet that person where they are Mm -hmm. or maybe I have to go a little further and and turn something on in them so those are all of my focal points right now for the rest of the year and 2022 is just looking like, like no other year, yeah. no other year, because it's so, going to be so much more intentional. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the, the big takeaways to even for myself in working with you, Kathy, and, and your business and the other UMTC lead educators is just how we support each other and learn from each other. Uh, you know, I'm kind of like you, I'm a little information junkie, little vacuum. Like I love to learn, but I also love to um, listen uh, to what else is happening in someone else's life. Even you talked a little bit about learning styles. So I'm an NLP practitioner and it's really something that I'm, uh, I know my, my students or my, my own children, when I was doing the NLP training and they used to say, are you analyzing me again? You know, <laughs> They would see the wheels turning because the way they were talking. But for me, it's so interesting when we truly listen to to absorb the message that the person is giving us rather than just listening to respond, right? And we've talked about that before is that when you listen to your students, really listen, like, what are they saying? What is their passion? Identifying their learning styles will help you as an educator provide the best education for these students. And I'm super proud of you. I've just seen your, your posts in the Facebook group and your pictures and you have like the best smile on the planet. And it just, it brings me joy. So I want to say thank you so much, uh, Kathy, for everything that you do. Thank you so much. It's just made a world of difference for me, Glory. So Thank you. Yes. I'm I'm just so excited to see what's coming up next for you. So how was the uh, UMTC Lead Educator Program changed about how you think about your business? Well, exactly that. I now think of it as a business. (laughs) It was sort of the crowning touch. I would think I I wasn't taking myself seriously as a business owner. Mm -hmm. And you really hammered that home and it wasn't painful. You weren't hammering. (laughs) It was, I was just hearing it again and again and meeting all those other wonderful music teachers. Oh, I just love being part of that group. And, and we've got our accountability partners. Mm -hmm. So really uh, taking it from the imposter syndrome to the, why not me? I actually am pretty good at this. Otherwise people would not come and they wouldn't stay for five or seven years or whatever so yeah it has become a real business now I sound like Pinocchio I'm a real boy (laughs) (laughs) it's a real business and I I mean I used to joke around about doing this until the the last day sort of thing and now I'm thinking no this is this is really great great new life into a business. And I'll be doing this for 20 more years, at least. Yes. Well, you know, and I think you're right about just the, well, the community, of course, who were very supportive and inside the elite educator program, we do have accountability partners. And I know for me, it's essential for me to have an accountability partner in different areas of my business. I actually have more than one accountability partner, but it's, it also lights you up because then you can brainstorm, right? You get ideas and you go, well, what about this? And what about that? And 
I think it's just, uh, it's been really um, enlightening for me to see educators who were not only sitting in their studio, scrambling and looking for help, but to say, here is an opportunity for you to to learn, to plan, to teach, to grow as a music educator. And uh, it's really why I created the program. And if you look back, uh, Kathy, what was maybe your biggest takeaway in completing the UMTC Lead Educator Program? Well, probably that, probably that, that I now can say with confidence, not just because I got that cute little certificate over there, (laughs) but it was a mark and it was a, I don't need a lot of extrinsic reward or whatever you sort of know in intrinsically. Yes. But it was just the whole package glory that you offer everything you have done and you give so willingly. It's lovely to be part of such an uplifting and forward thinking, nurturing all of that. And so I really was feeling definitely less alone yes <laughs> that i could reach out to so many not just you but so many yes. others and it became a real community so there's that mm-hmm. the, there's the business part but the creativity part too yeah. also has emerged it has emerged again and creativity in our own way so while you offer a program glory and it's nice and neat, lovely package, but it's us yeah. presenting it. That's right. And so you have never, ever said, this is my, you have, you know, drill, drill, drill. You have to be me. Yeah. <laughs> Although we would all love to be a girl. <laughs> <laughs> but you've never once done that. And so I felt completely at home. I felt completely supported. And I felt that I was on the right path. The aha it was just, this is my, this is my group. Mm-hmm. This is where I, I belong with these people. And, yeah. and I have now fuel to keep going till whenever. <laughs> and, you know, I remember you, you saying um, to me once about the affirmations mm. and maybe just elaborate on affirmations like what does that mean for you well I it's so funny I'm also lately and in huge ripple effect from you as well a lot of encouragement there to keep attempting the goal setting and I'm reading so much more on our subconscious and how it affects and and what we've lived and how it can change, but we have to be intentional and and that sort of thing. So the affirmations, it's very, very helpful for us to acknowledge the immediately the easy part, the things that we are already good at. So we, you know, say something very positive, and truthful about ourselves, something we can agree on immediately, and then move from there and work on the affirmations that then involve other people. So it's not that you're actually physically involving those other people, but when I put out, um, I'm going to have a full teaching schedule by September 10th, 2021, and and I just look at that every day, or at least I try to, and remind myself. And it puts us in a mindset Mm -hmm. of positivity. And that in turn, it's fuel. Yes, It's it's gold. It really is. I mean, it might sound a little corny, but but when we think of how we're not in a good mood and we're feeling down, that brings us down. Or we have the other choice. It might take a little work, and it does. It's worth it to spiral upward and really develop a belief in ourself Mm -hmm. so and our business or whatever yeah well really well said thank you so much kathy and i guess in in wrapping up our conversation today what would you say to someone who was thinking about enrolling in um the umtc lead educator program to grow their business i'll take this away from nike do it (laughs) (laughs) no absolutely i would are you worth it is your business worth it? Absolutely. And 
the money is not a lot. It's not a lot because you are worth it. And I have zero regret, only happiness and relief and all of those positive things that will continue to move me forward yeah. forever. So I am so glad I did it. Glory, December 28, <laughs> <laughs> 2020 <laughs> that was huge. Yeah. And, you know, and to think about all of this that you've accomplished and it's less than a year. Oh yeah. Like how many people get to take their business from here and, and go, Oh, well, now what am I going to do? And, and to say, you know what, I'm going to do this. I'm going to invest in myself. I'm going to grow my business. I'm going to, you know, make a change and, and you have to decide. Yes. You have to make that decision. You can either stay where you are and then you're still going to be there exactly in the same place a year from now, it's- or you can make a decision to say, you know what, I've made a decision. I'm going to make a change and, and it's going to elevate me and uh, bring me joy. Like we're all here to serve as teachers. I can't emphasize enough how important it is to, to come from a place of service and then the universe will just say, here, well, here you go. Right. So I'm, I'm so proud of you, Kathy. Thank you so much for joining me and sharing your story with us today. And I look forward to seeing you inside the membership and inside our, um, our Facebook group. Uh, the link is above or below somewhere here. So you can learn more about the UMTC Lead Educator Program. And we look forward to inviting you into our family. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you so much. Take care. Take care. Bye now. Bye.